Yay! Everybody's always asking me news on the Nikon mirrorless camera. Well, I have two points of information. Now, first we have to do a rollback to like a year or so ago, something like that. I told everybody that the sensor <laughs> inside the Nikon D850 was a Tower Jazz sensor. It's an Israeli-owned company that bought part of Panasonic. Panasonic owns Tower Jazz. Tower Jazz owns part. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. It was a Tower Jazz sensor, and everybody said, oh, no, 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 you're uh, wrong on that. It has to be a Sony sensor. I was like, no. I had someone that called me and gave me information. You know, some people think, like, the only people that get information, inside information on Nikon is this, uh, this darn website, and the person that runs that website also thinks that. Well, those people are wrong. You know, there's more than one source of information. So I said that. I got raked over the coals, and then later on, that website rolled out the information. Why? It turns out that it probably is uh, Tower Jess. I was like, yeah, that's exactly what I said. So the same source has given me two bits of information. We already knew this, as has been reported, that Nikon is going to show a prototype or mock-up or actually a full version of uh, their mirrorless uh, full frame later this year. They're going to announce it probably at Photokina. And it could be a stack sensor, or however I doubt it. It'll probably be a backside illuminated sensor. Um, but they're not going to drop it for release this year. The two bits of information that I got from the same source that fed me the information on the Tower Jazz sensor being in the D850, which turns out to be true, you know, for which I got ripped and said, oh, no, no, he's just speculating at his butt. It's like, no, I got, actually got a really good source on this. Same source told me two things. The reason why the Nikon mirrorless camera is not dropping this year, it will be displayed, all the specs. Well, you know, that's what to expect from Nikon 2018. Look is that uh, they have a supply issue for sensors. The same reason why they have an issue for the Nikon D850 and everybody is, is bitching and moaning about uh, D850s and their horrible lack of availability. So Nikon wants to build up a, uh, I guess, a football field's worth of sensors. You know, that's hyperbolic statement, by the way. Uh, so that uh, when they drop their mirrorless camera in 2019, that they'll have enough to meet demand because Nikon doesn't want another pissy fit Pissy fit, a fest flex going on with the D850 now. Point number two, and I speculated this would be the case because there's no chance in hell that Nikon can make a small mirrorless camera. And there's no such thing, I said this to begin with, there's no such thing as a small mirrorless camera. This is uh, Fuji's new mirrorless camera. It's pretty big. <laughs> it's not that big. Actually, I like big cameras. And there's no such thing as small glass. I've said since day one, remember back two years ago when everybody said mirrorless is smaller? Mirror and of course mirrorless is not smaller. Once you mount a speed light, once you mount a, a big friggin' fast lens on it and a vertical, there's no such thing as a small mirrorless camera. That's just total BS. The other bit of information I was told is that a prototype has been seen and then it's rather large. <laughs> so uh, that's something I knew would be the case with Nikon because the notion of like, you know how small the X-T2 camera is, right? And of course, I know that's a, uh, a crop sensory camera, but I mean like a Sony, for example. Sony, of course, Sony has the worst horrible crap ergonomics on planet Earth. For some reason, the idiots at Sony have no idea that like the lenses when you mount them on that stupid horrible camera are, are scraping the skin off your knuckles. The idiots at Sony just have no idea what ergonomics are. Um, but apparently the camera is, quote, not small at all. So the reason why the camera is not for sale this year is they want to build up sensor supply. And point number two is that the camera is going to be not small. It's not going to be, you know, like a Sony, but different ergos, obviously. It's like, wow, you know. they. Jam By the way, the Sony E-mount is a crop sensor mount. I mean, that's not my opinion. That's a hardcore established fact. The Sony E-mount was developed as a crop sensor mount. Um, so, by the way, of, of course, too, I mean, I, I told you this, and my source never mentioned this because it has nothing to do with the obvious fact that all current Nikkor lenses on the uh, uh, Nikon uh, mirrorless will require an adapter. I mean, flange distance necessitates that there is an adapter, obviously, with feeds through, so it would be like a, uh, an extension tube so that all feed and power and autofocus and everything could feed through that. Uh, I know that... Uh, they're probably going to announce six lenses uh, with the three lenses to be released with the camera and, of course, the adapter and then three lenses later on in the year uh, to accommodate. It's supposed to be called the Z-mount. I don't know how true that is or not. But anyway, 
The two sources of information I have is why it's not coming out this year for sale. It will be announced this year. Point number two is that I don't expect it to be a small camera like the uh, Sony full frame. And uh, uh, I did ask about, uh, yeah, I, that's important. I, I should have written this down before doing this video. I did ask if it uh, had a vertical grip and the, or the, the availability for vertical grip, and that was unknown. Only that the prototype was seen and it was not a small camera. Um, actually, the reason why, and on a uh, subsidiary note, the reason why a Fujifilm actually made this DSLR style cameras instead of like the X-T2, and like Fujifilm calls this their flagship camera, and of course this is with the vertical grip, is that Fujifilm, by their own words, quote unquote, we had an enormous amount of people that wanted a DSLR sized shaped camera, and that's of course what they gave people. Um, but I actually expected the second thing from Nikon. I knew there was no chance that Nikon was going to come out with like this thin, low profile, you know, uh, X-T2 type of mirrorless camera. I just knew Nikon has no ability. Well, actually they have the ability, but I knew Nikon would never make like this really thin, ultra compact body full frame DSLR, uh, excuse me, excuse me, mirrorless camera, excuse me. I knew that wasn't possible. Uh, anyway, everybody keeps asking about Nikon mirrorless, and I did get that information from the same source that gave me the information on the Tower Jazz sensor and the Nikon D850 that everybody told me I was full of crap on, and which turns out to be, you know, the case. You say, oh, you know, it's not a Tower Jazz. It's like, yeah, it is a Tower Jazz sensor. No, it's a Sony sensor. This makes total sense, too. Nikon wants to get away from their reliance uh, at sucking at the nipple of Sony as a southern analogy. Uh, get weaned off the nipple. Ever heard of that before? Get weaned off the nipple of Sony sensors. Um, also, too, it's been announced by uh, several places half a year or so ago that uh, Tower Jazz is uh, injecting uh, billions and billions of dollars of expanding their uh, sensor manufacturing. Obviously, ramping up production, and that's wonderful that Nikon has a new source for their sensors. And uh, I'm, I got so sick of people saying, "Oh, you know, there's a Sony sensor in that Nikon camera." Well, those days are over with, starting with, uh, not just starting with the D850, I mean, uh, Nikon was using Panasonic sensors in the Nikon D3, D3S, D3X, Panasonic sensor in the D4, there was a Panasonic sensor in the D4. Um, so basically, and Tower Jazz owns those plants, I forget, in Hokkaido province of Japan, they're former Panasonic foundries for sensor, manu sensor manufacturer. While it is owned by Tower Jazz, and it's a Tower Jazz sensor, is still basically the Panasonic plant, so Nikon is basically going back to their roots, which was a, s a Panasonic uh, sensor foundry manufacturer for their uh, sensors for their uh, DSLRs. So I guess they've come full circle. They went from Panasonic to Sony, mostly Sony, and now they're going back to mostly uh, Panasonic again, except under the moniker of uh, Tower Jazz. And the reason why the Israeli company Tower Jazz, if you don't know this, is an interesting factoid. The reason why the Israeli company <laughs> Tower Jazz wants to own those sensor manufacturing facilities is most people don't realize that the sensors in these cameras are highly adaptable to uh, military weaponry. Um, they're also used in the the uh, heat-seeking uh, and the infrared uh, nose cones of surface-to-air missiles and uh, air-to-air missiles and uh, sensors have enormous military application. And uh, I think that's, uh, I don't know what the connection there, I think Tower Jazz is somehow connected to uh, IMI, which is uh, Israeli Military Industries. So, the same the same company that's got the sensor in your camera is, is also making sensors for surface-to-air missiles. Um, I'm not actually placing any comment on that. I, I think it's just neat information. I like neat information. I love information in general, so there you go. There's the update on the Nikon mirrorless camera. Still don't know what it looks like, but obviously it's not going to be small, which I figured that anyway. Yeah, enough has been said on this topic but not for available this year. The only thing I'm actually waiting for this year is the X-T3 and the medium format uh, rangefinder uh, Fujifilm camera. Fujifilm's kicking everybody's ass. Yes, indeed. I still have 100% of my love for Nikon. I haven't got rid of my Nikon stuff. I've got all of it. 
Yep, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. There's the update on the Nikon mirrorless camera. And Nikon. By the way, Nikon, you are a really stuck-up company. And given the fact that uh, camera manufacturing and sales and distribution is a dwindling market, you'd think that Nikon would pull its head out of its fanny and uh, like try to emulate the stuff that Fujifilm was doing. Or at least, you know, Canon. I, I can't stay in Canon. The hell with Canon. Canon had really good customer relations. Nikon actually has good uh, tech support and good repair service, unlike Sony, which is total garbage. Uh, but Nikon has a, a horrible uh, uh, self-importance problem. Like, we are Nikon! We are the best! Considering they own the majority of the market, you know, it's understandable why Nikon feels that way. But Nikon really does not listen to its customers at all and say, we are Nikon, whatever we give you, you will love it because we are Nikon! That sort of corporate mentality, which is uh, reflective of the same sort of crap IBM used to pull back in the 80s and 90s. Like, we are IBM, we are the best. And that's the same sort of mentality that uh, essentially destroyed IBM. And Nikon is following the IBM model to a T. Not my opinion, that's a fact. Thanks. Mic drop. Bye.